let's bring in the Chief Investment Officer, Managing Director, and Co-Founder of the Bonson Group. David Bonson is with us now. David, good to see you. Good to see you. So earnings really driving the story. What's your take on Delta and BlackRock's quarterly results? And I got to ask you about GE as well. First, talk to us about the earnings story that's really driving things here. Yes, I mean, definitely those companies that are surprising to the upside as we get ready to go into the new earnings season, they're going to benefit. That's always the story. GE is a really interesting one because I heard you mention that it's uh, down today on results, on, on uh, aftermath of the analyst expecting a dividend cut. We sold every share we owned right around $30 at the beginning wow. of the year on the exact same fear. And the dividend cut, ha dividend cut hasn't come yet, but now I think it's almost inevitable. And, and that is what drives a lot of our stock picking decisions is anticipation around dividend growth. So really, I think GE is in a position with new management. There's going to be a lot of other noise around it, but their free cash flows are declining, Maria, and that, and that means it's a time for management to make tough decisions, but it's not what we would want to own. Wow. BlackRock, though, is two stories. It's a great story for their own results here today and the, and the kind of fee-driven businesses that keep growing that repeatable and newitized revenue stream. We don't own BlackRock, but we own companies like BlackRock. We think that one's a little more expensive, but you look at Blackstone, Invesco, these fee-driven businesses that are not balance sheet sensitive are wonderful stories in this market. Yeah, you know what? We got to take a minute and talk about this for a second because GE at one point for a long time was the place that you put money and you just forgot about it. I know you want to get to the banks, but Dagan, how significant is this that now we're talking about GE cutting its dividend. I think that it is an exclamation point on the decline in that company, how it struggled uh, since Jeff Emmelt, of course, now long, no longer the CEO, how Jeff Emmelt uh, performed under his reign. The he stock, sold all the important assets. Right. And the stock also wildly underperformed the S&P 500 during that period of time. But it, it's kind of the final note on the decline of a company that we used to follow as a barometer of the entire U.S. economy. Exactly. Well, right. well it's important to note about GE is they made a bad bet on um, oil and gas, right? Instead of going the way that Honeywell did in betting on aerospace, um, they went the way of, of oil and gas, and now it's hitting them, and it's going to actually impact their dividend, most likely. And then likely. they cut. They cut half the earnings or half the revenue when they sold GE Capital. Yeah, yeah, and it's a they completely had to. different company. Yeah, it's a completely different company. But I'm wondering, David. So we, we, you talked about BlackRock. Uh, you're looking at Invesco. Those are big financial companies. But tomorrow is the real kickoff of the financial earnings season. You know, J.P. Morgan's coming out. Citigroup. Should investors start positioning themselves in in the financial stocks in the big center banks, given that we could probably have a Fed rate hike in December? That's been very good for them. They performed well this month, up 7%, taking the leadership away from uh, technology and performance this month. What do you think about it? Well, I think that the issue with the big center banks is that there's been too much dependency on getting net interest margin, uh, higher rates, driving some of that revenue. And that becomes the sole story for some of them as far as real meaningful growth. A company like JP Morgan, for example, JPM is in a different boat because you have an incredible investment banking franchise. It's obviously very globally diversified. And they have that credit card business, mortgage business. It's so diversified there that the net interest margin drives numbers, but it isn't uh, the sole factor everyone's looking to. I think Bank of America, Citigroup have a lot of great things going on, but on a risk-adjusted basis and for more meaningful dividend growth. Remember, the Fed heavily regulates what these guys are doing with their income statement. So we think that uh, J.P. Morgan is in a better position there, but we still have balance sheet risk. So we're happy to get that exposure from that name. The asset managers, and I come back to Blackstone and Invesco because we happen to own both, these are names that don't have that same balance sheet sensitivity and also have tremendous growing fee revenue. Hmm. Would you put new money to work right here ahead of uh, earnings season, David? Absolutely. Now, I would push back a little on GE's bad bet with energy. Right. I think they made plenty of bad bets, the worst <laughs> of which was the timing at which Jeff Immelt took the role. Yes. I mean, really, history's not going to record his reign very well, but the, it was extremely unfortunate timing as to when he came in and so forth. But I think that buying distressed assets right now uh, is a good move. Going into earnings season, Maria, to answer your question, I think you're going to see some names that were picking up a lot of energy assets 
assets since 2015 at low prices starting to benefit. I think you're going to see accretion to their bottom line because right now you're getting a lot of performance out of those riggers and drillers and, and into the midstream assets going into 2018. That's the kind of thing we're looking for in the results here in this quarter. We would put cash to work, but not in the index. Specific bottom-up dividend growth names. All right. We will leave it there. David, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. David Bonson joining Thanks us again. there.